And we don't want to smell like you're walking around, you know, with your vagina on your back. I'm just saying. I decided to make this video because I know that there are a lot of young women that do not have someone at home to teach them about feminine hygiene. But it's a conversation that is definitely needed. Our young girls need to know how to take care of their vaginas every day, all day, because we all know that it's an ongoing process. Absolutely no judgment here. I will be as honest and as raw as I can be as long as YouTube lets me. <laughs> but I just want to be honest. I won't sugarcoat anything, but I want you guys to learn and really take something from this video. Please be kind in the comments if someone asks a question that you may feel that is common sense. Just give them some tips and be kind. We have to be here for our young sisters and our young women and just give them guidance, okay? That's what I'm here for. Again, this is a judgment-free zone. We all have a vagina. We all had to learn how to take care of it. So to properly know how to take care of your girl, we have to know her anatomy. We have to know her many different parts. We have the pubic area. We have the clitoris. You have your bladder opening, your inner lips, your outer lips, your vaginal opening, and your Bartholin's gland. I forgot those glands, Bartholin's, Bartholin's gland, I'm sorry. Those are the main different parts. So what we are concerned about is the vulva. We all know that the inside of the vagina is the part that's self-cleaning. But girl, we have to take care of the outside, okay? So yes, we do need soap to clean the outside of the vagina. Some of people may use just water, but to have that extra clean and that extra bit of confidence, get you a nice feminine wash. It's nothing wrong with using a feminine wash, okay? There's nothing wrong with you if you decide to use a feminine wash. You're not extra dirty, nothing like that, okay? It is just an extra step to help you feel extra confident and to clean those outer parts. Now, we're gonna get a little bit real here. If you are someone who wipes brown when you wipe from the front, it is because that you are not cleaning properly, okay? Prop that leg up, girl. Kick that leg up, spread her open. You need to be cleaning above the clitoris, under the clitoris, your bladder opening, because things build up in there, okay? You don't want that to be smelly or, you know, have residue or whatever it is in there. And that is the reason why when you wipe, it's brown, okay? You want to, like I said, clean all around. If you wash with your hand, you want to go in with a rag, of course, a rag that you only use for your vagina, and go in and go around the outside of the vagina to get rid of any residue or buildup that you might have, okay? Now, I use a couple of feminine washes. Of course, I love my down there feminine wash. Um, if you could, you could see me using that in my shower routine video. But now when like I have my cycle or something like that, I do use a different wash, but that will come up later in the video. Your daily hygiene, you definitely wanna wash her properly, clean her properly. Now, once you get out of the shower, okay, we all know that we are supposed to wear white panties, loose fitting underwear. You wanna wear 100% cotton so that it is breathable because other fabrics can harbor moisture and bacteria and that will cause a yeast infection and you don't wanna be burning and itchy, okay? That's what we are trying to avoid. We all know that we do not keep all white underwear in our drawers. Like that is just not realistic, it's not. So that's where you will have to wear a panty liner. My favorite ones are the always anti-bunch ones. When I tell you they don't move, they don't move, okay? You want to wear a panty liner daily, y'all. Daily. Cat to fabric is a no-no, okay? A no-no. You always need to have on a panty liner so that you can catch your heavy discharge or whatever, you know, may come out. If you're a mom and you laugh or you, you know, sneeze, you, if you know, you know, you definitely want to have something on that's going to catch that so you don't ruin your underwear. If you've ever not worn a panty liner and you've taken your underwear off and it looks like bleach stains in your underwear, that's because you are having a very strong discharge, okay? So, and I wanted to say that this is not medical advice. 
you know, if something is wrong and you know something is really wrong, please go and see your gynecologist, okay? Please. But yes, a panty liner on a daily basis is definitely necessary, especially if you are wearing colored underwear. Try to avoid nylon and polyester fabrics like they are not breathable and are not good for your girl. You don't want her to start screaming at you. You don't want her to start yelling, okay? So to keep her at a nice, cool monotone, wear loose fabric, keep a panty liner, and clean her properly. Once I have taken my shower and I'm, you know, getting ready for my day, I love to go ahead and take a probiotic. Now, a feminine probiotic is specifically made to keep a nice, healthy flora and microbiome. We know the vagina has millions and billions of different bacteria there, so you want to keep them all at bay and take you a, a vaginal probiotic, okay? It's just like a daily vitamin. You just add it in to your supplements. There are different kinds. Find the one that is right for you. I absolutely have been loving. I've been using these for a couple of months now. You will see also in my previous shower routine video um, is the Lemmy Purr by Lemmy. I absolutely love this probiotic. They're available at Target, if you know, they're by Kourtney Kardashian, and I absolutely love these. They have no high, fruit, no high fructose corn syrup, no artificial sweeteners or synthetic colors, gluten-free, gelatin-free, vegan, and non-GMO, and they are made with pineapple. Okay, so it's supposed to have you smelling and tasting sweet. So yes, get you a probiotic, add it into your daily regimen just to keep those things on track. Now, if you are someone who do suffer from, you know, urinary tract infections or, you know, you get a little mild itchiness or burning, this will help keep it at bay. But you also want to try a boric acid. Now, a boric acid is good to help keep the pH balanced. I like to usually do this um, after my cycle, but you can do them at any time. Like I said, if you are getting a little bit of irritation or you feel you have a yeast infection coming on, go ahead and get you some boric acid. Boric acid is going to be a game changer in your feminine hygiene routine. This is the one by Honey Pot, and it has boric acid and herbs, okay? Helps maintain a healthy vaginal pH range. And that's what you want. If you are having issues down there, it's because your pH balance is off. Your vagina is producing too much bad bacteria, okay? So you gotta see about her. I love these AZO cranberry supplements for urinary tract health. Take a couple of these a day. It's like having six glasses of cranberry juice, which is very, very good um, for your bladder. So you definitely want to keep these, and this will keep UTIs at bay because you do not want a UTI. You don't want that burning sensation or that urge that you have to pee really bad and you don't. It's super inconvenient and irritating. So these are a couple of supplements, a couple of things that you might want to keep in your medicine cabinet. You got your cranberry pills for your urinary tract health. You have your vaginal probiotic for your pH balance and your vaginal health and the healthy microbiome, which reduces odor. And your boric acid for if you're feeling like you're a little bit off or you know something's coming on that you really don't want, they will save you from having to go to the doctor time and time again. But now, if you have done some things at home and it's just getting worse and you have like a foul odor and it's just really, really bad, go and see your gynecologist. Now, I am a type of girly. I like to keep no hair down below. That's just my preference. I am a wax girly. I will shave, I will do whatever it takes, but I like no hair in my private area, okay? Now, whether you like to keep hair, you know, there are things that comes with that. Hair keeps odor. It can hold bacteria. It could just be a lot, it could hold blood. I like to just keep it clean. Now, I know some people are young and do not have waxing in their budget to get it done monthly. No, everyone doesn't have that $65, $75 to spend. So of course we all know that you can get rid of hair at home and we have this thing called Nair. We have options, okay? 
we have Nair, and I'm sure you guys have heard of V, you know, and different hair removal creams. Now, these are cool to use, but you have to be very, very careful on using them down below. What I usually do is, you have to think about this as a relaxer, you guys. It's the same process. When the hair is straight in a relaxer, um, it gets bone straight. When the hair is ready to be removed from your vagina, it gets straight, okay? It's the same exact process. To keep yourself from having an issue, and every time I tell somebody this, it's like groundbreaking information but you want to base your vagina the same way that you would base your scalp before a relaxer hear me out okay hear me out you want to use vaseline okay you want to use the vaseline you coat all of your pink parts with the vaseline go straight down the middle now i have a vaseline just for when i use this okay i don't it's not my household vaseline but you want to coat all of your pink parts with vaseline okay that's going to be your protectant of that skin in there because it is not fun if you burn your clitoris okay I'm telling you this, you do not want to do it. And regardless if you are a shaver or a waxer, you want to make sure you are exfoliating your vagina. A nice turmeric scrub is perfect. It gets rid of ingrowns, it gets rid of discoloration, and just a perfect day to keep that skin down there nice and pretty. And like I said, to keep bumps and ingrowns at bay. Now, I love to use this Vanish PV, blah, blah. <laughs> vanish pfb down in my vaginal area and this gets rid of ingrowns i don't know why it won't focus but it gets rid of its skin brightening ingrown hair relief waxing razor bumps cool blue roll-on it is for men and women okay i don't know if you guys have seen this in my if you haven't seen my shower routine video, but it's a really like slick texture and it works amazing. I roll this on, I have no worries. It's pretty safe. It has a very like vinegary smell. So you kind of know it's supposed, it's safe for that area, okay? I love this. You get it right off Amazon. You know, I have my Amazon store link, but it's, it's not even about that. I'm really just here to put you guys on some tips. But like I said, to keep ingrown hairs away, you want to exfoliate down there to keep her nice and pretty, keep the skin smooth, keep bumps at bay and all of that. And then go in with something for ingrown hairs. So let's talk about bathroom hygiene how to refresh yourself throughout the day you may be at the gym or just you know running errands you may be a little sweaty down there you know your order can get a little bit thrown off so yes of course you want to always keep some feminine wipes these are the down there wipes they go with the down there wash that i absolutely love i keep these in my purse this is the scent rose water but when i tell you that they are amazing they're plant-based i've never had any issues with them being scented um, and yes, non-flushable wipes. Do not flush wipes, you guys. Even if they say they're flushable, don't. <laughs> Do not. But keep some wipes in your purse, okay? Now, if you are at home and you want to freshen up, or if you're traveling, I keep my handy-dandy Perry bottle. Now, I use her for multiple reasons, but I use her in the bathroom to freshen up. I put some warm water in her. I run her down there a few times dry off with my wipes or whatever have you and I go on about my day change my panty liner whatever needs to be done then for the back I put some of my Thayer's witch hazel on some toilet paper and I wipe in the back it gets rid of odor it gets rid of the bacteria and you get a little bit of lightning too because of course it's going to even out your skin <laughs> But yes, this has been a game changer, y'all, especially in these summer months. Oh my God, I sweat in all my crevices. So this has really been keeping that sweat at bay. Like I said, it dries it out, it gets rid of odor, and you are refreshed and good to go for the rest of your day. Okay, don't never say I ain't told you nothing because this is a hack that I have been loving. <laughs> Ladies. 
don't be scared to get to know your vagina. Take a mirror, look at her, learn her, get familiar with her, learn what makes her tick <laughs> because she's very temperamental, she's very sensitive, but get to know her. She is you, you are her. And okay, like I said, we keeping it real. You want her to be desirable. If a man goes down there, it needs to be pleasant. A man gets turned on when it's healthy and it smells healthy because those are pheromones. It's supposed to turn him on. So make sure it's up to health, not only for someone else, but for you. You don't ever want to be embarrassed because you're not up on your feminine health. And that's what I you know, hear a lot of young women complain about. Now, it is true when you smell yourself first, okay? When you sit down, you get that gust of wind. You smell that. Take care of it. Don't wait. The longer you wait, the worse it'll get. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed to ask for help. That's why I wanted to talk about it because me and my friends, we talk about it. Girl, I will call my friends, girl, this is going on, such, 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 and such. Have this ever happened? Da, 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 da. No shame, no judgment. Like I said, we all are here to learn. This is not common sense. We're not born knowing how to take care of such a complex thing. It's complex. It's not easy. And it's not, you know, black and white. There are no two vaginas the same. The way I take care of mine, you may not take care of yours. Some products I use, you may not be able to use. But I still wanted to put these tips forward for somebody who have, may not known any of this. I can't assume that everyone knows. So, yeah, I wanted to say that. Make sure you are learning your vagina. Like I said, she is you. You are her. And, yeah, get to know your girl. And we don't want to smell like you walking around, you know, with your vagina on your back. I'm just saying, okay? After sex cleanup, okay, let's talk about it. Let, let's talk about it. We all know what goes up must come down. Okay, and you want to be prepared when it come down because baby, if you do not take care of her and you just get up and start moving out and about, you know, and start to sweat and all of that, you're not going to like your smell. Okay, so what you want to do after you have intercourse, ladies, first, let the, I want to say, what goes up, let it come down. Okay. Let it come down before you get up. But you want to always, always, after you have intercourse, get up and go and urinate to prevent UTIs. Go in with your peri bottle because you could easily put it in your spin a night bag, okay? Get your peri bottle. That way you're not, you know, it's discreet. Put some water in it, fill it up, cleanse yourself, rinse yourself, and you can go to bed with no underwear, which is great for your vagina for it to breathe. You know, and if y'all, you know, if, if things gonna be popping again, you're ready to go, you're clean, keep your fresh panty liner, change your panties, you know, do what you need to do. So let's talk about infections. Of course, we know the most common is a BV, which is bacterial vaginosis, and we have yeast infections, okay? They are both two different, but very common. Yeast infections is an overgrowth of fungus, bacterial infection, well, bacterial vaginosis is an overgrowth of bacteria. You want to, like I said, keep infections at bay, eat a lot of probiotic rich foods, fruits, vegetables, yogurt, things of that nature. Stay on top of your, like I said, your care after sex. Make sure your partner is clean, their hands are clean, Everything is clean because any little thing can turn into bacterial vaginosis. It's especially, especially highly common in pregnant women with your body fluctuating, hormones fluctuating. You know, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like I said, you can get bacterial vaginosis, like I said, from certain fabrics, certain chemicals. Um, like I love to use um, Downy and scent boosters in my laundry. I know doggone well that I cannot wear my underwear without a liner because that would just tear her up with all the chemicals and scents and everything like that. So just knowing things like that and just being conscious um, can help you. Just be intentional 
about the things that you are doing down there and putting up against her in the situation that you put her in. Like I said, make sure your partner is clean. Make sure before y'all are, you know, doing the do, he's washing his hands. Make sure he's not using any scented body washes or anything on his private area because, like I said, any little thing will set you off. Now, we will know that we have a yeast infection. It can lie dormant in a man forever before he even has symptoms. So you will be treating yourself and getting rid of it. But as soon as you sleep with that person again, he will be giving it to you every single time. And you'll be wondering, why can't I get rid of this yeast infection or this BV? And this may not have anything to do with you, but everything to do with the person that you are sleeping with. All right, so let's talk about menstrual care because I know that when I was in high school, this was the talk I know most girls needed the most, okay? Someone smelling you on your period is just a fear of mine. So I take my hygiene up notches, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are wearing a nice organic pad. I love the L brand, 100% cotton pads. They're organic. I have them right here. I get them from Target and they work day and night because they're long. I think this is a super, but they do have regular, of course. Um, and it has wings and it looks just like this. And of course you just lay this in your panties. You wanna lay this in your panties and then you're gonna fold this part back to grip your underwear and it should stay put. Of course you take the other sticky part off and lay them flat and you should be good to go. Of course, you get the pad that is best for your flow, okay? I only wear tampons when I'm like gonna be active or you know, running or jumping, but on a regular, I am a pad girly. I'd rather that stuff just run on out of me. I can roll it up and throw it away. Now, when you discard of your pad, okay? This is just what I do. When I discard of my pad, I take it and I roll it up. Okay, I roll it and then I will take a piece of tissue because I hate when I go into a public restroom and I can see the side of the pad in the trash. Like I can see your blood and stuff on the side. I cannot stand it. So what I do, I take a piece of tissue and just go around it once. I ball it up and I place it back into the paper like so, and then I throw it in the trash. What my mama always told me, no one should be able to walk into their restroom after you and know what you've done, okay? If you gotta do number two, you better spray some poopery, okay? And if you're doing number one, do a courtesy spray or just keep yourself together so that you have no issues because no one wants to smell remnants of your behind when they come into the bathroom after you, okay? And wrap your pads and tampons up and dispose of them properly, please. Like I said, just roll it up, wrap it up with some tissue, throw it in the trash. Of course, with a tampon, you would just flush it down the toilet. Then, of course, you want to always keep your wipes with you, your vaginal wipes, so you can take care of yourself when you have to go to the restroom and do a little cleanup, because we all know the flow can get kind of messy. Things roll to your behind. It's just, it is what it is. So get you a nice wipe or your handy dandy peri bottle, which is I use religiously on my period. Every time I go to the restroom, I pull out my peri bottle, I do a quick rinse, I dry, and then I put on a fresh pad and I'm good to go. You can get TSS, which is toxic, toxic shock syndrome from leaving your tampons in too long. So when you want to make sure that you are changing those frequently because if you leave it in too long, it will smell foul. It will smell like rot, rotten blood, okay? And you do not want to smell like that. It is very unpleasant and you don't want that. And trust me, other people will be able to smell it same thing with your pad make sure you are changing them as frequently as you need according to your flow i usually like to do mine between every two or three hours or three to four hours and just constantly keep a fresh pad on and cleaning yourself in between and you should have no problems with smell now let me say this period blood does have a smell but we all know the difference between you know the period blood smell and then when something's off with your vagina smell or something is wrong okay so just be mindful of that 
your vagina naturally has a smell. A vagina doesn't smell like nothing, okay? It's going to smell like you. It's going to smell like skin. It's going to smell, you know, whatever your natural body scent is. Also on the go, make sure you pack a little bag. Like, you know, even as an adult, I still do this. When I was in high school, I did this religiously. I had a little pouch and I would keep a fresh pair of underwear, a tampon, a pad, wipes, whatever I needed just in case my cycle came on at school or if I was out and about and it came on, something just to keep me you know, safe and confident and secure that I know if something went down or if my period popped on, then I can handle it right away. Are you a girly that gets cramps? Like you cramp really, really bad on your period? I had friends in high school that literally could not even come to school on their period because the cramps are just so unbearable. Now that I'm older, I cramp um, a lot more, but it's not like, you know, it doesn't handicap me or, you know, put me down for a day or anything like that. But to help soothe those cramps that I have been using as a natural supplement that I have been adding, and then there's these raspberry leaf supplements. These clean out your uterus and they help you with cramping. When I tell you these have dramatically reduced my cramping, um, even if you use raspberry tea, like I said, if you're not a supplement girly and you don't like taking pills, raspberry tea would do the same exact thing. But these have been a game changer when it comes to my menstrual period. I don't take them daily, but I do take them like during my PMS period. When I know my period is coming during my period and then you know, a couple of days after my period. But they work wonders okay raspberry leaf is a nice natural way to rid of cramps like i said they clean out the uterus so and they also help with tiredness tiredness due to menopause so if you're going through menopause and you're exhausted and you just don't have the energy raspberry leaf is a big help as well when i shower on my period i use a different feminine wash as well you do not have to do this. This is just what I do. I like this wash because it includes boric acid. And that is the Monostat Film Wash with boric acid. And it gently cleanses away odor and discharge. I love using this while I'm on my period. Simply for the boric acid factor. We get rid of odor, any um, residue, blood buildup. We all know how that can be. This is perfect for it. So like I said, I only use this when I'm on my period. All my other days, I'm using my down there wash in rose water. Now, another option, if you want to refresh um, at the end of my period, how I refresh, get everything back nice, get everything back right, I love to take a bath. And what I do um, on the last day of my period or when my period is finally older, over, I add a baking soda to my water literally like half a teaspoon into my bath water and it does wonders okay it will detox you it pulls out all of that period dried up blood old odor excuse me or whatever the case may be this works wonders like i said you do not need a lot a lot excuse me like i said you, you do not need a lot a half a teaspoon is just fine if you want to refresh and just you know reset your girl after having your menstrual cycle because honey we all know that that time is stressful and we all need a little bit of self-care once she is over and then who is better to care for but the girl who went through it all okay so we have to treat her top notch hygiene has to be top notch she deserves it okay <laughs> she goes through a lot especially for my mom's we know that she changes a little bit after having a kid. You know, she might leak a little extra. Like I say, you might have overactive bladder and just different reasons to cause different smells, different rises and falls in bacteria. We just never know. All right, you guys, that is it for my feminine hygiene tips video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you are new here, I hope that you are considering hitting that subscribe button and joining the family. I would love to have you here and y'all we are almost at 1k ah! we are growing so fast again i can't thank y'all enough for hitting that subscribe button but if you enjoyed this video drop a comment let me know some tips that you do um let me know inspire somebody else leave some words with somebody else and yes welcome to my safe space and to the next video y'all